Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We continue our verse by verse study through the vibe through the Bible. This is our fourth series going through the entire Bible verse by verse. We finished up in the book of Daniel last time, so we move on to the book of Hosea, the Old Testament book of Hosea, chapter one, verse one, in just a minute. Reminder to you that to you that you can study the Bible in its entirety, all the way from Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is click and listen. You choose the book of the Bible, the series, the book, the chapter, the section, and all you need to bring is your Bible to the Bibleversebyverse.com. So check it out, and if you haven't started a study with me from Genesis through Revelation, verse by verse, I would certainly encourage you to do that. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Biram, in the days of Uzzah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. So Hosea begins his book, inspired by God, of course, by telling his readers that this is the word of the Lord. And of course, that is something that should be kept in mind whenever we read any portion of scripture. It's not the word of Hosea. It is the word of the Lord. Verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry. For the land hath committed great harlotry, departing from the Lord. Hosea's life was ordained by God to be a picture of God and his people, Israel. Israel had become unfaithful to God. God saw that as being spiritual adultery. So as I said, Hosea's life will become a living picture of that broken relationship between God and an unfaithful wife called Israel. Hosea is to marry a woman of harlotry, which just goes to show that God has the right to tell us what to do, even if we don't like it, even if it's not even in our top 100 of choices, which I'm sure this would not have been for Hosea. Three, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Debalim, who conceived and bore him a son. She bore him a son. So the first child was Hosea's and Gomer's. Four, and the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Jezreel means God scatters. So Hosea is instructed by God to name their child God scatters. The name was a warning that God's wrath would soon be poured out on Israel and her king, the people that Hosea, in part, was preaching the word of the Lord to. Five, and it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel and the valley of Jezreel. God will break the power of Israel's military. She will not be able to prolong her security once God's judgment begins. This is a stern warning to the people that he is preaching to. And again, the judgment is illustrated by the name of Hosea's son. God scatters. Verse 6, And she conceived again and bore a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Lo-Ru-Hama, 
For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Lo, Ruhamah means not loved. What a name for a person, huh? Name your child not loved. Well, God instructed that that was to be the case because he was announcing to the nation Israel that he would stop showing his love for his people. Seven, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Judah was the southern kingdom of Israel. The south had not yet at this time turned their back on God, so God's going to spare them. Verse 8, Now when she had, had weaned lo Ruham ma she conceived and bore a son. It is significant, it is significant that the last two sons born to Gomer are not said to be the sons of Hosea. The first one, remember, did say that about him. Not the, not the next two, though. Why? Because Gomer was unfaithful to Hosea, even as Israel was being unfaithful to God. Nine. Then said God, call his name Lo, Lo Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Lo Ami means not my people. So the contrast between God and Israel has been, the contract, I should say, between God and Israel has been broken because of their sin. They, therefore, can no longer count on God's protection. They did not submit to God. God was not their God. So the contract, the deal is off. The deal is broken. And God is not, God is not obligated to protect the Israelites anymore, and he won't because they are not his people. They walked away from him. He didn't walk away from them. They walked away from him of their own free will. Just like Gomer walked away from his husband, Hosea, her husband, Hosea, and conceived this child who has been called not my people through whoredom. <clears throat> Verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. So, God's punishment would be stern, furious, and hard. They'd be sent into exile because of how they turned their back on God. God turned his back on them, put down the wall of protection, and they were easily conquered by their enemies. But God's punishment would only be for a limited time. It would then be followed by a time of blessing once again when the people would finally repent and return to their spiritual senses. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. The children of Israel in the north, the children of Judah, the southern kingdom, the split kingdom will one day be united, says Hosea, and it is. It was brought back together in the Old Testament, but it's also united in Jesus Christ. Because all true Jews, those who have repented and submit to the Lordship of the Messiah and the Son of God, Jesus Christ, join the church and have one leader, that leader being Israel's Messiah and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So God ends this first chapter with a message of hope for his wayward people who are about to go into judgment and exile. And we'll pick it up in chapter 2 next time in the book of Hosea. In the meantime, 
If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. And if you would like to donate to this ministry, you certainly can do that. Just go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. I'll see you next time in the book of Hosea. Until then, so long, everyone.